Welcome everybody to the KB Music Den. As always, I'm Brad. And you, sir. I'm everyone's friend, Keith. <laughs> you are, sir. You definitely are. Thank you. <laughs> so, what are we here to do today, Keith? We are here to continue on this Goldilocks trail of is it just right? Is it overrated? Or is it underrated? Mm. So, today, so today, what I've decided, and I, we told our uh, listeners last week, we were going to do Grateful Dead's American Beauty. This yeah. is an album that actually somebody recommended it to me and asked us to do. So I said, let's do it, because I'm not so familiar. Now, you have the album right there. How familiar are you with it? Well, you know, I'm, I was, before I even listened to it for this Goldilocks episode, um, I was pretty familiar with it and okay. even more familiar than I realized, because as I went down through and listened, um, at, at least... 40%, if not 50% of this album at one point or another, I have covered uh, with <laughs> my old bands or at open I, mic. Um, I was jumping. afraid you might have. I was afraid yeah. you might have. So, I mean, I, I knew this, but I haven't I hadn't revisited this one in a while. But when I did, I was like, oh, yeah, this in some ways, this is almost like a greatest hits, you know, <laughs> of their popular songs. Yeah. So, yeah. So for me going into this, I'll explain why this one was important to me is Okay. My, I have friends that are big deadheads, and um, nine times out of ten, they're really just listening to live albums. That's what Grateful Dead makes their money. They're, you know, they're, they're just such a great live band. They just, mm -hmm. the uh, intricate performances, the um, just doing things on the fly as they're going. Yeah. So in my head, I said, is this a studio album band? Can they go into an album? I mean, a studio, make an album that's fascinating or are these songs just good because they're so unique live in the way they're played so when he well my friend jesse recommended we do american beauty i said that's a great idea because i yeah. haven't spent times with the actual studio albums so i was curious how they ranked up so i kind of went into this and i looked at rolling stone as we've been doing to see what yeah. does rolling stone think and rolling stone has us at 215 on the top 500 okay albums of all time. So at least i have a a guiding point to go on whether this is overrated, underrated, or or where we're at. So yeah. going into this, as far as as a player in this, now one thing I find fascinating is when listening to this album, the number one thing that stood out to me was the bass because of the sound of the bass. Yes, um, it's a unique sound I don't hear on very many albums where it literally sounds like it's plugged into an amp and it's just played raw. Like there's just no effects, no. It just sounds like a guy on his porch with his thing plugged in, but I loved it. It's really cool sounding. Yeah. So yeah. playing these songs in the cover band, was that kind of a, a like a fun chasing after yeah. Lash? Yeah. Well, and I'll be perfectly honest. We we did so many different songs, uh, covers and originals, that as I listened back, back to some of this, uh, now, Friend of the Devil, I was pretty true to what's on the album with my bass mm -hmm. part. Um, I know we did Ripple. Uh, we used to play Ripple as well. Um, we tried to learn Box of Rain, but oh my gosh, there's a million different <laughs> tours, and we just, yeah. Chris, you know, Chris Mo, our singer, just he wanted us to do that so bad, and we kept trying and trying. It's and a great I think he song, finally yeah. just threw his hands up and said, uh, "I'm not wasting any more time with these hacks." <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, yeah, but I, I kind of did a a cheap, cheap version on some of these, uh, just because okay. we had so many different songs to do. But in retrospect, I kind of regret that after <laughs> listening to this because, you know, <laughs> like you said, the bass parts are so tasty and the yeah. and the, the tone is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I'll, that you said your friend's name is Jesse? Yes. Yes. All right. He's a big deadhead. He has a Grateful Dead tattoos like a lot of them do. You know, he's yeah, yeah. Um, taking he's already got his kids addicted to the Grateful Dead and early teenagers. You know, like they are, a you know, big time fan base. So, yeah. I, I had to dive in. I had that rudimentary live information of them. And I, when I think of Grateful Dead, we named this channel Music Den. Do you remember when we worked at the Music Den and we had all those little damn bears? The, oh, the yeah. Grateful Dead bears. Yeah. That we had to price individually. Like, they were like yeah. those Beanie Babies, but they were Grateful Dead bears. Yeah, uh, very colorful. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Collector's uh, items. Oh, I always go back to that and think about it. So initially, I gotta say, I was kind of blown away by this album. Listening to a studio Grateful Dead album, okay, it's really well done. Um, this is not just some, some band they stuffed into a studio. I just found out by going through this, this was the second album of that year. They did 19, yeah. they did Working Man's Dead, 
1970 yes. and then followed it up with this one. Um, yeah. Which two the studio albums in one year. So fantastic. I mean, for me, there were a couple highlights, and you kind of mentioned them all early on here. Box of Rain, Ripple. Yeah. I really liked, um, God, what was the other one? Uh, Broken Down Palace. Um, yeah. yeah. Great, great stuff there. Um, lyricist on this. What, what did you say his name was? We, we had to think Robert about Hunter? it. Robert Hunter? Was it Robert Hunter? Robert Hunter. Fantastic lyrics. See, Fantastic. I, didn't even, I didn't even realize. I, oh, and actually, I wanted to mention this. I've been showing the CD. Um, I also have uh, a documentary. You know the classic album series? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this is, it's called From, or I thought it was called From Anthem to Beauty, but it's just called Anthem to Beauty. Um, okay. So their album, Anthem of the Sun, um, and then it, you know, it's kind of, it's not just about American Beauty, but okay. I'd say roughly about half of this is very much specifically about American Beauty. Okay. Um, but I learned so much watching this. I think you would really enjoy this. I, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it's on YouTube or anything, but um, yeah, I mean, and that's where I really found out. I mean, I didn't know they had a lyricist. I just assumed you know, Jerry Garcia or Bob Weir or, Phil, you know, Phil Lesh or whoever yeah. um, was writing the lyrics. So that was that was interesting to me. It is interesting, especially when there are some of these songs are so personal. Like, yeah. Like, uh, what was the one that I'm thinking of here early on? It was Box of Rain. I believe it was about Phil Lesh's father dying of cancer. Yes. I mean, that was my, yeah. God, the lyrics on it are fantastic. I mean, we have uh, Maybe You're Tired and Broken, Your Tongue is Twisted with Words Half Spoken. Like it's just, again, that have you said everything you wanted to say before you go kind of thing. But for Hunter to pull that out, like, those yeah. feelings for someone else, I mean, that's impressive. Yeah, he was so in tune. And he was part of the documentary. They interviewed him as well. They interviewed Phil Lesh about his father. Okay. Um, he was sitting there at the soundboard as they were going through, muting some stuff, pointing some things out uh, technically. And, uh, yeah, he, you know, understandably, he got a little choked up during that part of the interview. I can absolutely um, imagine, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I would definitely recommend watching that. And to uh, a lot of deadheads, I'm sure I probably already watched it, but um, <laughs> yeah, sure. very, very interesting. And you know, it's something that I noticed. Um, and we'll get back to, of course, the studio versus live and, sure. and all that stuff. Um, of course, you know, they didn't only build their career on playing live, and they built an entire culture. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, you know, and to this day, I mean, it's being carried on, you know, by bands like Fish and uh, Dave Matthews Band, where it's just. Yep. I mean, the music is paramount, of course, but you're not going just for the music. You're going for the experience. The community. Um, yeah, exactly. And like you said, all the mm -hmm. tattoos. I mean, it's it's this music and this band really means something to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, it's like in some way, you know, for some deadheads uh, back then when they would travel with them and stuff, it was it was a way of life, um, you know. So uh, but you know what I found interesting watching this documentary? Um, these guys are just very obviously very very talented musicians mm -hmm. but they're very thoughtful people when you listen to them they speak are. and they're very intelligent man i just mm -hmm. i'm watching this thing and i'm like every time they they talk to you know jerry or bob or, or phil or whoever or robert the lyricist i feel like i'm listening to like a college professor talk but about yeah. music yeah um uh, in a good way it was very cool uh very eye-opening um but back to the live versus studio thing. Now, let me ask you how I know you knew the live stuff better than the studio stuff going mm -hmm. into this because, you, like you said, you barely knew the studio stuff, yeah. um, which is par for the course with the dead. Oh, nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> um, but how well versed were you in the live stuff? Were you just a casual fan or you knew it pretty well or had certain I mean, concerts or albums that you liked? Or Well, if we go back to the music then, you know, there was a coworker of ours, Courtney, who would often put in the Europe, I think Europe 72. Uh, was the one that she had. <laughs> okay, well, there it is. Yeah, that one. So I bought it. I bought it two days ago, by the way. <laughs> oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, that one was in rotation pretty heavily. Um, there was yeah. A, yeah. I'm trying to remember the other one that I listened to quite a bit. There are two or three that I've heard quite quite a bit and, and enjoyed. But what I found fascinating was hearing songs like Ripple or other songs I knew, and then hearing them now in the studio version. Or uh, you know, it's very different. It's um, controlled, whereas with live, it's just kind of on the fly, improvisation. Um, you know, the band's just, and the, which is I find amazing that bands can do this, just play on yeah. the go, like just go off of each other. I find that the Ripley, like these songs stood up so nicely in the studio. They, they, 
you know, even though they in their live setting are so big and hard to put your arms around because they're just they're moving and they're fluid on the yeah. studio versions. I thought they were fantastic. You know, I I have a little bit of a different take on it after doing this deep dive. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I shouldn't use the word deep dive. That's for discount. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, I feel like. And it's interesting because I always thought, and I heard I've heard this over and over and over again mm -hmm. in my life, you know, being being a musician and you know, just a lover of music, talking to so many different people about so many different bands, important bands like this one. Sure. And to a man and woman, I've heard, you know, oh, the live stuff's where it's at. I mean, no one came right out and said something like the studio album suck, because that would be a stupid yeah. thing to say. That's the Grateful Dead. Um yeah. but I see now here's something that the folks at home need to know, and you probably already know. But I have always had this weird thing about live records, live albums, where I am much more into studio albums. And what am I going to say? If I have a live thing, I want to see it, too. I want to put a DVD on. Yep. I want to watch it and see it, not just listen to it. And yep. I've been like this my whole life. Um, not that I never, ever listen to live albums, but um, it's very rare. And I'm starting to think that I have really made a major mistake <laughs> um, and I need to correct that because this bad boy right here, see, and part of the thing for me, and it's such a stupid thing, and I'll, I will admit it that I'm an idiot mm -hmm. about this. Um, when you hear the, and you don't hear it a lot on this, which is why I like it. When you hear the crowd in the background or you hear the crowd at the end or the beginning of the song kind of clapping or rustling around or making noise, I always feel like, Oh, like edit that part out like i just want the music and it's so stupid um because yeah. it's just a few seconds here a few seconds there but i noticed with this one you know for the most part they do you know you don't hear the crowd at all i mean this could have been just them rehearsing and then someone yeah. pressed record and captured it um so the thing where i differ with you a bit um is and i mean i know to a certain extent you'll agree with the premise of this sure um something happens to this band when there is an audience in front of them. Oh yeah. yeah. And to me, honestly, that magic is not captured on American beauty, the studio album. Um, is it, does it sound bad? No. Um, it sounds great. They're amazing musicians. Um, the songs mm -hmm. are great. Um, but there is something, if you hear the live stuff and if you didn't, you wouldn't know maybe, but oh, yeah. if you hear the live stuff, there's something a bit, and I will use the word sterile, to me about the studio version of American Beauty. And also, and I really don't know, I don't know if I'm right about this because it seems <laughs> crazy that this could be true, but sometimes the harmonies on the studio album sound a bit off to me. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. Now, I could be wrong. Um, now, I did notice a, a fleeting little moment in the documentary where Phil Lesh made a quick joke about they were listening back to something and they were like, uh, cause they, in the documentary, they flat out say, you know, they had no idea what they were doing in the studio initially. Yeah. It was like a playground to them. Um, <laughs> and it was just like a foreign thing. They, they were a live band. Uh, they thrived on that. So it was kind of uncomfortable for them at first. Um, but then to make working man's dead and American beauty in the same year is just unbelievably Impressive. great. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, Phil Lesh kind of made a little offhand remark about, they were listening back to something with the harmony. He's like, he's like, he's like, wow, it's actually in tune. And I was just like, now maybe I'm reading too much into that because I thought what I thought before I watched that. Um, yeah. But I, I can't explain that in a live setting with three, sometimes four part harmony, the vocals sound quite frankly better than they do on the studio album where you, where you can sing it 20 times if you want to. And I think that's maybe the problem that, they were trying to they were trying too hard to be too perfect in my opinion yeah i don't know i could be full of shit but i mean that's just the impression i get which i get i mean my thing is the bands you mentioned earlier all have the same thing dave matthews band fantastic live band where you know we prefer to hear a live album than you would a studio album or or same thing with fish you got their crowds there too same same thing but yeah. then i look back and like you know, like albums like under the table and dreaming and like stuff like that and they have put out, even though they're live bands, fantastic studio stuff as well. And to me, American Beauty is fantastic. Now, in where I rank it, that's what we do yeah. on this, Just Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, I'm going to go Just Right on this one. Um, it's, I would say it's in the middle of the pack of the 500. I think it is very an important album, and I think it was really well done. 
for me personally, it was underrated because I did steer <laughs> clear of it because of the live albums. I yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. Oh, it's it's a studio album. Don't pay any attention. Just stick to the the live album. There's no reason to dig out a, a studio album. But now that I have, I mean, I want that on vinyl. I like it. It's it's an album that I would play. I mean, and it's studio. So I I I dismissed it for the wrong reasons, thinking it was just this is just a live band. Pay no attention to the studio. And I would say I was wrong for that. Well, and you know, there are deadheads that fall on either side of this coin. I mean, there's a, you know, the studio and live. I love it. Um, I don't think you'll find a whole lot of people that strongly prefer the studio to the live stuff. No, I would, um, I would be shocked if that's the case. Yeah, of your of your deadheads, you know. Um, I noticed, by the way, the artwork. Actually, I shouldn't say I noticed. I learned from watching the documentary, uh, the artwork here, which is beautiful. Um, the bottom word, I don't know how this will translate on the screen here. The bottom word, beauty, the way that they did that, it also reads, you can read it as the word reality. Oh, I didn't know that. No, okay. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that that well in here, but. Well, it's kind of funny because I can see it now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So something else I learned by watching that documentary. Um, geez, I sound like I'm going to get like promotional or like a commission kickbacks if I get people to watch that documentary. <laughs> I do not have that kind of a hookup. Um, but, you know, getting back to the Goldilocks uh, premise, like you mm -hmm. like you said, um, I end up on this, after all I've said, um, I end up with the same exact answer as you. It's just right. Um, okay. These are absolute drop-dead classic songs. Uh, great performances. Um, like I said, there's just something about what happens to them live with that audience in front of them that kicks it up to another level. Yeah. But that is to take you know, not too much at all away from what this is, which is a, uh, it, there's a reason it's on the classic albums documentary, yes. <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, so, and it was, and thank you uh, for picking this and thanks to your friend, Jesse, because um, it was really fun for me to revisit this. Um, yeah. And when doing this, of course, because I knew we were going to be talking about studio versus live. I did revisit Europe 72 and I did realize that, you know, there's not really crowd noise. It did the song ends yeah. and I just kind of chop, you can hear them like chop it, you know, right away. Uh, they did that for me. I'm sure. Um, I was going to say, this is a, that's a, that's a Keith live album right there. Yeah. Yeah. So there it is. Europe 72 with all the great songs. I stumbled upon it at Ico's music trade here in York uh, the other day. I was just sitting right there. Beautiful, you know, near mint condition. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I gotta, I gotta have this in my collection. <laughs> So, yeah, man. So we both end up on Just Right uh, yeah. with Grateful Dead. And uh, you know what's happening now, buddy. It's my turn to pick. It is your turn. What, what kind of crazy-ass surprise do you got? Dude, I've got a big <laughs> surprise for you for this one. <laughs> All and right. I think this just kind of – it just kind of came to me about this. and But what I think this is going to do for this entire Goldilocks game series is it's going to open up a whole other world of albums for us. Okay? okay. Because – I don't really think, you know, albums get a lot, sometimes albums get a lot of hype. Um, and so I don't think they have to have been around for 20, 30, 40 years for them to be featured on this, on the series, right? No, not at all. So what I'm going to throw at you, and I'm interested to see if you've even heard of this band. There is a band, uh, pretty sure they're from Ireland, and they do their own version of folk that is different than probably anything you've ever heard. Okay. Um, the, uh, the, uh, magazines that I really are my go-to magazines from the UK are, uh, Mojo and Uncut. Now, Mojo, this album, by the way, was released last year, 2023. Okay. All right. So Mojo had it in their top 75 albums of the year at number three. Wow. And Uncut magazine has it in their magazine here for the top albums of the year. At number one. That's impressive. Have you heard of the band called Lankum? Lankum? Lankum. L-A-N-K-U-M. Lankum. I have not. Okay. Well, guess what? That's what's next up on the Goldilocks game. Fair enough. The album is called False Lankum. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Yep. Okay. There's a picture of the band there. I don't know how well you can see that. Yeah. Um. I will admit I've heard the first few tracks several weeks ago, just as yeah. a, you know, I was getting these magazines in and I'm like, blank them, blank them. I've kind of heard the name, but I don't know anything. So I put it on. Um, 
and yeah, it was very interesting. Okay. <laughs> um, so I uh, want all of the uh, folks at home that are playing along here, um, you know, maybe you know this album because it was ranked so high for album of the year. Maybe you don't. That is high. Yeah, I mean, one in three in my favorite magazines, that is super high. Um, they're on Rough Trade Records, by the way. That's great. So, the great, great uh, record label. Yeah, so there you go right there. Um, we're probably in good hands. <laughs> um, but yeah, very unique take um, on traditional folk, is, is all I'll tell you so far is from what I was okay. able to read and listen to briefly. Um, I have I've not heard the entire album by any stretch. I heard like the first three songs. Um, but I said to myself, you know what? This is something that'll be very interesting to see if we if we think it's overrated or underrated because you know it was ranked so high on these lists for album sure. of the year that you know I'm curious to see once we listen to it our opinions you know is this just one of those things where someone says it's cool because it's so different than everybody else is like oh yeah I love that too or is it yeah. really that cool you know um, and obviously everybody has their own opinion um, sure. but I thought that would be an interesting twist because you know when you think about it we've been doing some of these classic older albums which makes perfect sense. Um, but, you know, I mean, we could do something from uh, 2012 that was considered one of the best times of the year. You know, we could do something from the 50s if we want to, you know. Yep. So this Goldilocks is wide open. So, yeah, um, so yeah. Um, so Lankum, the album's called False Lankum. <laughs> um, that is our next. Uh, didn't see that one coming, did you, buddy? No, I did not. That's, that's, <laughs> a, that's a surprise. Yep. There we go. That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> um, so, folks, you know, what we're going to say way in, in the comments about and. Anthem Beauty, <laughs> American Beauty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oops, no editing. Uh, by the Grateful Dead. Um, weigh in on the studio versus live debate. Um, you know, are you a deadhead? Are you a casual fan? Uh, did you revisit this album because you're following along? And thanks, by the way. I mean, we've been getting lots of great comments. Um, you can tell yeah. there's people, you know, anxious to hear what we're going to pick next, and they want to dive in with us. I mean, I I couldn't even imagine that that would happen in you know less than a year and a half basically is where we are with this channel and we've already got mm -hmm. you know you can tell there's that that core group of people that are just you know, like waiting for our next video which is i i never even thought that, that could happen so we thank you so much <laughs> it's all you keith it's all you oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we said we were going to call it the b and k music den but it sounds too much like burger king so it would have been yeah not good yeah, it's like, you know, music reviews and commentary. Have it your way. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but for, as always, Brad, I'm your friend Keith, and this is the KME Music Den. Uh, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it on social media, smash the bell for notifications. You'll be notified every time we drop new content. We've got Disknology REM continuing. Um, we're going to get back into ranking albums in real time soon here, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Um and a bunch of other stuff, oh, lots of great new albums coming out in the next couple months as well. We're already into February, so yep. Here we go, guys. Hang on for the ride, and <laughs> thanks for your support. And thanks for your time, Brad. Absolutely. And thanks to Jesse for the pick. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. All right, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching, as always. We appreciate you. Take care.